Hello everybody and welcome to a new chapter called as food and health. Now you eat food to get energy to work and to play and also you need to grow and make your body strong and healthy. So this is because your food contains nutrients. There are different kinds of nutrients that are found in food. So what are the functions of nutrients? It provides energy, it helps your body to grow and it helps your body to fight against diseases. So these are the functions of nutrients. To get all the nutrients, you must eat a variety of food every single day. So what are these main five nutrients that we have to eat every day? The first one is carbohydrates. The second one is fats. Third one is vitamins. Then we have minerals and we have protein. So these five are the main nutrients that we have to have every day. They are carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals and proteins. So we saw the different roles of nutrients. Let us study each of them one by one in detail. So the first one we will be doing is energy giving food. So what are these? They give energy to work and play. So energy giving food gives you energy to work and play. Sugar, starch, carbohydrates give you quick energy. What are the sources of sugar, starch and carbohydrates? They are rice, potato, bread, wheat, sugar and noodles. You can see the pictures here. I am sure most of them you use in your day to day life. So these are nothing but sugar, starch and carbohydrates that give you quick energy. There are another group of energy giving food. They are called as fats. Now fats unlike sugar and starch get stored. They get stored and later they are used for giving energy. The sources for this is butter, ghee, oil, nuts and cheese. I'm sure you're aware of all of these. You've seen all of these around your house. Now when we see the second category of food, it's called growth food or bodybuilding food. Now the name itself suggests that these food groups help your body to grow. So what are they? Proteins help your body to grow. And they help in building muscles, blood and skin. So this is how they are helping your body to grow. Also, they help in body repair when damaged. What do I mean by this term damaged? Damaged means when you fall down and wound yourself, when you have an open wound, it generally heals, right? That is because proteins help in healing the damaged skin or healing the wounded skin. That is what is meant by body repair. Now, what are the sources for proteins? They are fish, meat, cheese, chicken, liver, milk, eggs, pulses and nuts. Now you can see the pictures of a few of them here. These are the rich sources of protein that you generally consume in your diet. The next variety is called as protective food. Now as the name suggests, these are varieties of food that help in protecting your body. Vitamins and minerals are needed in very small quantities to stay healthy and fit. So vitamins and minerals are the example for protective food. If the body does not get enough of vitamins and minerals, it leads to a condition called as a deficiency disease. Okay, so if you don't have enough of vitamins and minerals in your diet, then you will end up with a deficiency disease. So what are the examples for this? If you see sources of vitamins, you have vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, D, E and K. So easy to remember, they are A, B, C, D, E and last one is K. Okay, and sources of minerals are calcium, phosphorus and iron. Now apart from these three main groups, we have a fourth group called as water and roughage. You know that a major composition of your body is water, right? So apart from all other nutrients, body requires water and roughage. Nearly two-thirds of the body is made up of water. What are the sources of water? Many of your fruits and juicy vegetables that are there are all contributing to water in our diet. Apart from that, we have water as it is or water in juice. So these are the various sources through which we get water. So we've covered water. What about roughage? What is roughage? Roughage is nothing but fiber. If you remember your market product, they say that they are fiber rich food. So what is fiber? Fiber cannot be digested. Your digestive system cannot digest fiber. Secondly, it adds bulk to food and helps muscles to push food through stomach and intestines. What does bulk mean? Bulk means that they add volume. They increase the quantity of food. Last one, 
they keep your intestines healthy and help the body to get rid of undigested food this throwing out of undigested food is aided by fiber in our diet that is why it is so important to have fiber in our diet so what are the sources of fiber all plant foods contribute to fiber in our diet they can be any vegetable or green leafy vegetable or fruits any plant source of food that we eat contains fiber in them now let's look at a balanced diet to build a strong and healthy body you need all the nutrients in correct quantities you can't get all the nutrients from just one type of food so what should a balanced diet be a diet containing the right amount of all nutrients as well as water and roughage is called as a balanced diet so it means that it should have all the nutrients in the correct proportions you just can't eat one type of food every day right so you need different types of food every day in order to maintain a balanced diet now to make it easier to select a balanced diet we have a food chart so if you see here food is divided into four main categories according to the balanced diet the first category is called as cereals now if you see cereals the examples of cereals is rice chapati bread and noodles now cereals will provide you with carbohydrates and minerals so c is carbohydrates and m is minerals so cereals will provide you carbohydrates and minerals the second category is all your fruits and vegetables any example of fruits and vegetables will come under this so what does fruits and vegetable provide us they give us vitamins they give us minerals and they give us carbohydrates so fruits and vegetables give us vitamins minerals and carbohydrates the third category of food is milk milk will include any milk product which contains milk so we have milk we have cheese we have curd even ghee and butter comes under milk products so milk this provides proteins and fats along with minerals so milk gives us proteins fats and minerals the last category of food is proteins protein food which includes meat fish eggs pulses nuts and peas these are the examples of the sources of proteins these will majorly give you proteins and fat okay so if we go over them again food is divided into four categories that is cereals you have vegetables and fruits milk as well as protein cereals give you carbohydrates and minerals vegetables and fruits will give you vitamins minerals and carbohydrates milk gives you proteins fats and minerals and protein gives you protein as well as fat so for a balanced diet you need to eat food from each of these groups every day that is how you can maintain a balanced diet now let's look at how we can preserve the nutrients in food before we go into types of preservation let's see in how many ways we mishandle food so if we see the food that we eat because of wrong handling we tend to lose out on the nutrients so how exactly we tend to be wrong in handling food the first one wrong method of cooking or handling food second one is washing cut fruits or vegetables when you wash cut fruits and vegetables all the nutrients in them gets washed off in the water itself so that is something you shouldn't do like this picture shows you have to wash whole fruits and vegetables and only then cut them the third method in which we are mishandling food is by overcooking when we overcook food all the nutrients are lost and the last method is cooking food in excess water and discarding the water this is a mistake that many people do they cook food in excess water and then throw away that water when you're throwing that water away all the nutrients in food is generally lost so this is something we should avoid doing so these are the four main ways in which we are losing nutrients in our food and these are the ways which have to be avoided so let's see how exactly we can preserve food for longer now there are various methods of preservation there are about eight methods of preservation of food let's look at them one by one if you see the first one it is by refrigeration so this is by keeping it into the refrigeration section of the fridge here we can store food for a few days whereas we have a deep freezer section of our fridge also so if you put an article of food inside the deep freezer you can store it for a few weeks so this is the second method of storage the third method of storage is by dehydration dehydration means removal of water from food for this the example is dehydrated peas this is how dehydrated peas looks like 
okay so we are removing all the water content that is present in peas which helps us store it for longer the fourth method that we have is by sweetening the name itself suggests sweetening means addition of sugar so we are adding sugar to any food article which helps us store it better the best example that we can all relate to is jams right we've all eaten jams and we love jam so jam is a method of uh, preserving food by sweetening another type of preserving food in sugar is by preservation of cut fruits in sugar syrup if you see peaches and pineapples you, you get them in cans which are filled with sugar syrup right that is nothing but preservation by sweetening the fifth method of storage is by salting the name itself suggests this is storage or preservation of food by addition of excess salt so we add a lot of salt to that particular food to help us store it longer example for this is method of preservation of fish you can see here there's so much salt that is added on and below this fish which prevents it from getting spoiled. The sixth method of preservation is by canning. The name itself suggests that we are going to store it in sealed cans. Now example for this, you have your fruits like I mentioned for sweetening. You have your cut pineapples. Next time you go to a supermarket, look out for cut pineapples in a can. That is a method of uh, preservation by canning. Apart from that, you have your cans of baked beans, which is added for sandwiches. So that is also preserved in a can. So this method of preserving food in sealed cans is called as canning. The next method is called as pickling. I'm sure you're very aware of this one where you have your examples such as mango pickles, you have your mixed vegetable pickles and also you have pickled onions. So in it, the last and the eighth one is addition of vinegar or oil. So to a food substance, if you're adding excess of vinegar or excess of oil, it helps in storing that for longer time. Example for this is whole black or green olives. If you've seen black or green olives, they're generally inside a liquid, right? That liquid is nothing but vinegar. Adding vinegar to any food substance helps in storing it for longer. So these are the eight methods in which preservation of food can be done. We have refrigeration, we have deep freezer, dehydration, sweetening, salting, canning, pickling and the last one is by addition of vinegar or oil. Alright, so this completes this part of the chapter. Let's do a quick recap of what all we covered in today's class. We looked into the different kinds of nutrients in food and how they help us. We saw five main ingredients of food which were carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, minerals and fats. We saw the different categories of food that were four main categories. We saw energy giving food, we saw bodybuilding food, then we saw protective food and lastly we spoke about water and roughage. We even spoke about the balanced diet and how we can include the different food groups into our diet so that we get a balanced diet. And lastly, we spoke about methods of preservation of food. So with this, we've completed the part one of the chapter. If you have any doubts, please comment below and we will get back to you. Thank you.